Margaret Cleveland. I'm a fourth generation fish farmer here at Ozark Fisheries in Martinsville, Indiana. And today I'm giving you a virtual tour of our fish farm. So our farm actually started in Missouri um, in 1926. My great grandfather started our Missouri farm um, actually at Bennett Springs, Missouri, uh, which is a trout farm. So he started with trout and then he moved to our current location in Stoutland, Missouri and uh, went into goldfish. Uh, he had a friend in the nickel and dime business uh, or those nickel and dime stores like the Benjamin Franklins that could um, sell every goldfish that he could raise. So he switched from trout to goldfish um, and started raising those. Um, and then in the 1970s, uh, we, all, we bought out our biggest competitor um, here in Indiana. The Indiana farm is originally called Grassy Fork Fisheries, um, and it was started in 1899, so it's over 120 years old. It's one of the oldest and largest um, continuously operated private fish farms in America. Um, but in the 70s, my great-grandfather bought out his biggest competitor, Grassy Fork, um, and for a couple more years, they were run as Ozark Fisheries and Grassy Fork separately. And then in the 1990s, it all came under the Ozark Fisheries name. So we are here in Martinsville because um, Martinsville, Indiana is kind of known for fish. Um, there are a lot of different fish farms here um, that raise bait fish or game fish. And um, there's also a state fish hatchery here as well. Um, this area has always been known for its water. Martinsville um, has our uh, springs. But traditionally fish have been raised here since the early or the late 1800s and um, so that's why we're here in Martinsville. So our water here in Indiana um, is all well water or recycled out of the creek. All of our systems are flow through systems so our ponds are all flow through systems as well as our tanks in our shipping department. Um, we raise ornamental goldfish and koi. Uh, we raise about five different types of goldfish and um, two different types of koi as well as pond scavengers. So all of our fish spend about 99% of their lives here in these dirt ponds, but we actually spawn them all inside in an, in an indoor hatchery. So let's go look at the hatchery. Okay, so this is our spawning facility. Uh, we spawn everything outside. So all of our fish spawn. They don't uh, breed per se. Um, so we bring the males and the females here, our brood fish, into this facility. We let them sit for a day. And then um, all of our fish are actually injected with a hormone. That hormone shot will make them ready to spawn within uh, six to 12 hours. And the females will release their eggs, the males will release the sperm, and that egg is fertilized in the water. So it's really important that we have a really low amount of water in these tanks. Um, at the bottom of the, the tanks, we put what we call spawning mats. These spawning mats are made up of nylon fibers um, that the eggs can attach to. Naturally, in the ponds, the eggs would attach to the substrate on the side of the pond, so the grass or the rocks, um, but so that we can bring these mats, we, we want them to, the eggs to attach to these mats so that we can bring them inside our hatchery so they can hatch out indoors. As you can see in these tanks, uh, there's also netting that cover them. So when the fish are spawning, they're really vulnerable. So we wanna make sure we protect them and, and, and keep this netting to, to keep any birds or other animals out. Okay, so goldfish and koi spawn in the springtime when the water temperatures warm up above 72 degrees. We just uh, finished spawning this year. It was actually a little late. Um, typically May and June are when we're spawning. Sometimes in April, it really, it really depends on the weather, but this year it was really cold, so we were a lot later getting started. But we just finished last week bringing the last fish out of the hatchery. But let's go take a look at the hatchery. So this is our hatchery. We spawn everything out in our spawning tanks outside and then those mats are brought into the hatchery. We used to spawn everything out in the ponds, but in the ponds, there's a lot of factors we can't control. We can't control the water or the water temperature, so the weather, um, we can't control the predators. So um, goldfish have a lot of predators, snakes, turtles, uh, bullfrogs, birds. But if you think of goldfish fry, which are the baby goldfish, there's even more things like even insect larvae can eat goldfish fry. So it's important for us to, to give our fish the best chance of survival and bringing them into the hatchery allows us to do that. So in the ponds, we think we had, when we were spawning in the ponds, probably about a 13% survival rate of our, our the hatching or the eggs that hatched out. Um, but when you start bringing them into the hatchery, we hope that we improve that close to about 20 to 25% survival rate. 
Okay, in the hatchery, the flow of the water starts here, and the water is heated here to uh, about 72 degrees, and then it flows through here to our super saturators. Um, we're gonna super saturate all the water um, with oxygen, and then that oxygen, oxygenated water is gonna flow over to the tank. Those spawning mats are brought into these uh, indoor tanks. There, we're gonna put the amount of uh, mats that we put in the tank depends on how many eggs are on the mat. So if it's a really heavy spawn and there's a lot of eggs, we're going to put fewer in this tank. If, there are, uh, if they're really light and there's not a lot of eggs, we're going to put more in this tank. We can spawn up to about a half a million on average fish in this tank at a time, up to a million, um, our best, uh, tank that we've spawned out had a, over a million fry in it. So the mats are here in this tank um, for three days. And on the third day, they start hatching into baby fish. Um, they're in here for two more days before we take them out into the pond. So these tanks um, have their own, uh, each have their own inlet and outlet, but they um, have water that's going into the water is super saturated with oxygen. Um, it's gonna always have fresh water going into it. Uh, we're gonna be checking the oxygen in these tanks um, three or four times a day, making sure that that oxygen is at the level that those fish need to be at. The water temperature is also gonna stay pretty warm, above 70 degrees, typically around 72. Um, the, the more regulated, the more that you can keep it stable, the water temperature and the oxygen, hopefully the be better hatch rate will have. So when the mats are in these tanks, we treat them after we bring them in. So the egg is open and once it's fertilized, it's gonna be open for a little bit longer. We wanna wait until it hardens, typically a few hours after it's laid. Um, and then we're going to treat those, these mats and these eggs. Um, if you have a fertilized egg next to an unfertilized egg, that unfertilized egg can develop fungus. And so we wanna treat so that that fertilized egg stays viable. So all the fish here in this tank are gonna, the water's gonna be drained down. We're gonna pull this little a drain pipe. This drain pipe has a really fine mesh on it to keep all the fish fry in there and from going out. Um, baby fish, when they're born, they're the size of an eyelash, so they're really tiny. All of our koi fry are born yellow and then change over time into the, the color that they're naturally gonna be. And then goldfish are actually born brown. And so all the fry from this entire tank, it could be up to a million fish. Typically it's more like a quarter of a million will be drained out of here. The water is all gonna come out and it's gonna actually end up in this uh, repurposed oil drum. All the fish will be in here and then we'll take a small water displacement sample to see on average how many fish are in here. Okay, let's head out to the ponds and look at some fish. All of our fish are grown in these dirt ponds. Um, behind me, we have three different locations that have uh, about a total of 250 to 300 ponds, uh, about 300 water acres, so each pond is about an acre. Uh, originally, we started out with really small ponds, so traditionally, uh, raising fish, you raise them, in, and uh, raising goldfish especially, you raise them in really small ponds, but we've learned over time that about an acre a pond is what we, we uh, a good size for us, so we keep them at about that. Each of the ponds have their own inlet and outlet, so they're flow-through systems that um, have water that go through them. Uh, we can control the water levels uh, based on that outlet. So if we pull that outlet a little bit, we allow a little bit more water to, to go through it. Um, they're always having water go into them, so in the winter time, they never totally freeze over. They do get some ice on them. So you'll notice we don't have aerators in our ponds. Uh, we keep them stocked light enough that we don't need air extra aeration. Uh, we just have that fresh water flowing into them at all times. So all these ponds were built um, in the early 1900s, so a lot of them are really old. So right now we're working on rehabilitating a lot of them, redoing a lot of them uh, to help build up the levees and to make them a little bit deeper because a lot of them have silted in over time. So traditionally, a long time ago, all of our fish, all of these ponds were hand fed. So we need a lot of people to be able to feed all 300 of our ponds. But now we use one feed truck. Um, that feed truck has a special arm that throws the food out into the pond. 
So when the fish are in the hatchery, they actually don't use any feed because they're eating that egg sac as their first meal. Once they're taken out into the ponds, we're gonna start hitting them pretty heavy with feed, that fine mash feed, that powder, typically a couple times a week. Um, the rest of our fish do get fed probably almost daily, if not just a couple times a week throughout the summer. In the winter, the fish are not fed. So the, the when the water gets really cold, their metabolism slows down and they're not actually going to eat any feed or very little feed uh, that's not just naturally there. Our fish in the uh, shipping department actually only get fed once a week on Fridays. It's really important when you're shipping fish that they have a clean system. So the fish are only fed on Fridays so that their system has at least 48 hours to clean out before they're needing to be shipped. Most of our fish get fed five millimeter pellets. All of our food for our Indiana farm is milled right here in Indiana. Typically, most of our food is a soybean corn mix. So when the fish are the size and the color that we need them to be, we're going to seine most of the fish out from the pond. So a seine is just a really big net. We take that big net and go around one corner of the pond. We're going to seine those fish out. Um, we're going to move them from the seine into a live haul truck and then move them into our shipping department. Snail, crayfish, and tadpoles are things that we call pond scavengers. We don't try to raise them, but because we're raising goldfish, they are here naturally on the farm and we're able to sell them. We collect them out of the ponds using a couple different methods. Most of them are collected like crayfish and tadpoles come in with the fish and then we have to sort them out. And then crayfish are also collected using traps, traps that are set in the ponds and then they're checked and the live crayfish are brought into our shipping department. And then things like snails have to be picked up by hand. So when a pond is drained, um, the, crayf or the snails are on the top of that mud bottom and you have to go out into the muddy pond and collect them by hand. Okay, so the fish come out of the ponds, they're in our live haul truck. We pull up beside here and we're going to use a pipe from the truck to these tanks. Um, that pipe is what we uh, lovingly call the, the fish water slide. They by gravity go from that truck into the, uh, the tanks. Uh, a good, every time you touch a fish, you're gonna stress it out. So we try to reduce our touch points as much as possible by using nets or by using pipes to help that water. Those fish move naturally uh, without having to actually touch them or handle them. Um, but they're moved off this truck into the uh, this tank. Uh, the tank tanks all have a warm water and a cold water uh, inlet. That allows us to bring them in on warm water, the same temperature as the pond, then slowly acclimate them down to cold water. We wanna ship everything on cold water. Cold water is better to ship fish on because it holds more oxygen. Uh, it also slows down the fish's metabolism so that the fish are using less oxygen. So all of these tanks are flow through and they also have aerators that do add oxygen so that we're able to put more fish in each one of these tanks. We do also salt our fish. So this is just a rock salt um, that we want, anytime we handle fish, we always want to salt them down afterwards. Salt does a couple different things for, for goldfish and koi. It helps de-stress them a little bit. It also helps them reproduce their slime coat, um, which helps keep them from getting diseases. So let's go on and see some more fish in our shipping building and talk about how we ship our fish. So once the fish are in our building, typically around 24 hours, once they're fully acclimated, then we're going to actually start handling and grading the fish. All of our straight-tailed fish are uh, graded with uh, tank graders. Those are like graders pulled through. The smaller fish are able to go through. The bigger fish stay on one side of it. You use different size graders for what size fish you want um, or what size fish you need. So after these fish are graded and they're the size that we need them to be at, we're going to move them, dividers are put in and then they're moved into nets and holding nets until we're ready to sell them. So for our fan-tailed fish, we're gonna actually table sort most of them. And so we're gonna put them across the table. We're gonna look at to make sure their tails look good, that they have no imperfections on their body, that they're the right color and size we want them to be. So each one of these sections, uh, we're gonna move a different size into. So we have three inch fish, four inch fish, and sometimes even larger. Um, so each net represents a different size or type of fish. 
as we walk through the shipping room, you'll see a lot of different uh, varieties of goldfish. So we have about four different types of goldfish. We have a fantail, a red fantail goldfish, a calico fantail goldfish, a sarasa, which is a red and white goldfish, a shabunkin goldfish, uh, which is a blue goldfish. We also have two different types of minnows, fathead minnows, rosy red minnows, which are just a pink fathead minnow. And then we have two different types of koi. So we have standard fin koi, um, and we have butterfly or long fin koi. We also have something called uh, pond scavengers, which are like our bullfrog uh, tadpoles, our snails, and our crayfish. So our bread and butter fish is, is our common goldfish. We sell the most of these at a really small size. Um, most of our fish here on the farm, we're gonna sell within a year of them being born. Uh, so typically they're under uh, 12 inches. So most of our fish are gonna be this one and a half common goldfish, uh, but we also sell up to an 18 inch, a 20 inch uh, koi. So now you know how the fish are sorted. Let's go look at us packing the fish up to ship. So here's where we ship our fish. Uh, the tanks behind me are what we hold uh, and we pick the orders for in the mornings. And then the afternoons when we ship everything, we're gonna use this shipping line. Um, and so this is how we, we package and ship the fish. And let's look at how we do that. So these holding tanks here are repurposed burial vaults and uh, we have cans in each one of these tanks, uh, typically 14 cans in one of the, the, one of the vaults. Um, each can represents one box of fish. So if a customer orders four different boxes of fish, they're gonna have four cans that are labeled here. Um, and then typically when we put the fish in there, they're gonna put a colander over it to keep the fish from jumping out. So here's our packing line. Um, Traditionally, a long time ago, when we first started shipping fish, we shipped fish um, via live haul truck, and then we actually moved to shipping fish on the railroad. So we had these big live um, ca uh, cans that we would ship fish in. It would have an ice block on the top. That ice would melt and it would percolate down. Um, and that worked for a, a, a lot of years, shipping them on the railroad, but then it became less reliable. So we actually patented how to ship live fish in a box. Um, we use a cardboard box, and then you're gonna add um, some lining, either styrofoam foam liner or a foil liner depending on the temperature you're going to add ice so again keeping those fish really as cool as possible is really important because cold water holds oxygen better and also keeps the fish from using oxygen as much and um, so you're going to add ice to the box and then you're going to add two different plastic bags we're going to double bag everything just in case that first bag fails you want to have that second bag to protect that water from getting out of the box Um, we're gonna move it on down the line. We're gonna add water. Typically, it's about a gallon and a half of water. We're gonna add a little bit of chemical to help with the ammonia. Um, most of the time, we use bake a baking soda mix to help keep the ammonia in the box down. It moves on down the line, and then that box is gonna be matched up with the customer and the can that it, those fish are in. So that can of fish is then going to be moved to that box. Um, moves on down the assembly line then it's going to have pure oxygen. It's hospital grade oxygen that's added to the bag. And that bag is then uh, folded up and tipper tied or zip tied to keep that oxygen and water in place. It moves on down the line and then we tape the bottom and the top at the same time. So we ship Monday through Thursday, um, every day of the week for the most part, except for Friday, because Saturday delivery is not uh, very friendly, not very good, and it also costs a lot to ship on Saturday. So we ship uh, air freight, um, typically on Monday mornings, uh, and then the rest of the week we're gonna be doing DHL, FedEx, and UPS. So along with selling live fish, we also sell a couple different types of fish feed. Um, it's all just a different uh, pellet size and we also have flake food as well. So our fish are shipped out all across North America, uh, mostly into the US, but also into Canada. Uh, most of our customers are pet stores. So we sell a business to business, so pet store, garden center, or a wholesaler that's gonna combine freshwater fish and saltwater fish um, to then sell them to the, the end customer. Um, uh, we do drop ship a lot of fish for a lot of online ret retailers. Um, so we ship directly from our farm to the customer's door. Thanks for visiting the fish farm today. I hope you enjoyed your virtual tour. You can find us online at ozarkfisheries.com 
or on social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook at Ozard Fisheries.